Each school day in Maine, over 10,000 students receive medication in the course of a school day. Many of these students are more successful learners because of the medications they take. Students and their families rely on school staff to assure accurate and timely medication administration. In some schools, school nurses are available to administer medications, but in many other schools, secretaries, teachers, educational technicians, principals, and others administer medications to students every day. Medication administration is serious. Main guidelines from the Department of Education require that school staff who administer medications in schools are adequately trained so they perform this task safely and accurately. This video was made by the Department of Education to assist school nurses in training unlicensed personnel in schools and child care settings to safely administer medications to children. Unlicensed personnel are staff members who do not hold a health professional license but who are authorized by their school district or child care setting to administer medications. The purpose of the video is to provide very basic information for the safe administration of medications. Each of the four segments of the video is meant to be followed by an opportunity for the school nurse to explore topics further, to have group problem solving sessions with participants, to have an opportunity for return demonstrations, and for questions and answers. The four segments of the video include, first, the legal and regulatory guidance, community resources, and basic anatomy. Second, the identification and documentation of medications. Third, the actual technique of administering medications. And fourth, troubleshooting some common problems in medication administration. Maine law authorizes school districts to designate unlicensed staff members to administer medications to children under Section 254 of Title 20A of the Maine statute. The Department of Education promulgates rules defining the safe components of medication administration in schools, while the Department of Human Services promulgates rules defining medication administration in child care settings. These rules change periodically, but the information presented today is current as of the year 2002. The Department of Education rules are much more specific and detailed, but both the Department of Education and the Department of Human Services require a parental signature and a physician's order for any prescription medication given in, in a school setting. In addition, that any medication given must be documented. The Department of Education also requires that school districts have a medication policy in place and that the district provides appropriate training for any unlicensed person giving medication. The Family Education Rights and Privacy Act, better known as FERPA, is a federal law that protects the privacy of health information in student records. This includes information about medications a child might be on. Therefore, you may not share this information with anyone without an essential need to know. This means that medication administration records should be private, the medication administration itself should be as private as possible, and you may not share this information with anyone unless they have a need to know or the parent has signed a release authorizing you to share information. The most important document for you to understand is the medication policy for your local school district or child care setting. You must understand this document, use it, and refer to it as often as necessary. The best way to protect yourself and your school district or child care setting from liability is to follow the school district policy and to attend carefully to the task of medication administration. The Maine Tort Claims Act protects you from liability when you are designated to administer medications and you are following the district policy. Your local school district also provides insurance and the details of that 
coverage would need to be provided by your local school district additionally the uh, main state law section four zero zero nine of title twenty a provides protection from liability for unlicensed employees of schools who provide emergency first aid emergency treatment or rescue assistance to students during a school program this law will be important when we discuss the administration of emergency medications when giving medications to children in schools or in child care settings it is very important to understand the community resources available to you first and foremost the most important resource that you should be using is your school nurse or your child care health consultant other resources may include the child's parents the guidelines that accompany this video the local pharmacist the local primary care provider the poison control center the emergency medical services and any books about medications that may be available at your school when administering medications to students it is important to understand some very basic points of human anatomy most medications are given by the oral route uh, or by mouth most medications are either given this way in tablet form or by uh, liquid form the medication enters the child's mouth is swallowed by the child travels down the esophagus and into the stomach in this from the stomach the medication goes into the small intestine where it is absorbed by the bloodstream after, after it travels through the body and performs its work it is uh, broken down and excreted by the liver and the kidneys and then is passed out of the body some medication is given uh, to the eye when medications are administered to the eye it is important to note that all eye medications are administered in the lower conjunctival sac the lower lid of the eye is pulled down and the medication is applied there and there only some medication are is administered to the ear and that is usually in the form of an ear drop the medication is dropped into the ear according to the prescription and you can see that the medication travels down the canal but is stopped by the eardrum It is important to realize when you're administering medications to children in schools or child care settings that there are various classifications of medications. One classification has to do with the naming of the medication. The medication has a generic name and may also have a brand name. Every medication has just one generic name and that is the chemical name. It may have, the same medication may have several brand names depending on the drug company that makes it. For example, ibuprofen is the chemical name of a medication. Depending on which drug company makes it, it may be called Advil, or it may be called Nuprin, or it may be called Motrin. Likewise, methylphenidate is the chemical name for a medication that is, whose brand name is Ritalin. Another classification of medications uh, is a prescription drug versus an over-the-counter drug. A prescription drug is a medication that may be given only by prescription of a medical doctor or a dentist. An over-the-counter drug may be bought at a pharmacy without a prescription. It is very important for everyone to realize that these medications are still very powerful medications. Another category of medication is the controlled substance category. This is a federal category, and it is based on possible abuse potential of the medication. It is important to understand that in schools, we do have medications that are Schedule II and Schedule III medications in our schools. Schedule II medications include narcotics, such as codeine, and stimulants, such as Ritalin. Schedule III medications would include a drug such as Tylenol with codeine. It is important to understand that these medications must be counted when they come into school so that the school nurse or the person administering the medication can keep track of the number of tablets that remain. All medications must be stored 
in a locked cabinet. If they are stored in the refrigerator, that area ought to be secured as well. If the medication is an emergency medication, then a plan needs to be made for emergency and quick access to that medication. One other category of medications has to do with the classification of the medication and the purpose in the body. There are several of these classifications and they are listed in the guidelines that accompany this video. Uh, I would like you to use the time following this segment to review with your school nurse the classifications of medications that are used in your school. Some of the classifications include drugs that are used to control asthma, uh, medications um, may be anticonvulsant medications for seizures. They may be stimulant medications for students with attention deficit problems. They may be homeopathic medications. There are many, many uh, categories of medication, and the school nurse will review the most common categories that you may be administering in your school. Medication is required to be brought to a school or a child care setting in an appropriately labeled container. This should be a label that is made up by the pharmacist according to the physician's directions. This is uh, very important. It, ha it contains a wealth of information that you will need to know about the medication and the dosage. Please get used to reading different pharmacy labels. Various pharmacies use a little different format, and it is important that you get used to reading a range of labels. Some labels can look the same if they're from the same pharmacy. So make sure when you're reading a label that you're really concentrating on the words and, and reading them. Some of the information that is contained on a label uh, includes, usually in the upper left-hand corner, the name of the pharmacy and the pharmacist's phone number. Uh, a little bit lower is the name of the person who is receiving the medication and that person's address. The pharmacy label will also can include exact directions about how much medication to take and when to take it. It will include the name of the medication, the brand name and the generic name, the strength of the medication, the physician who prescribed the medication, the quantity of the medication in the bottle, the date filled, the expiration date of the medication, how many refills are left on the medication, and then there may be additional labels that require your attention, such as the medication must be stored in the refrigerator or the medication must be taken with milk. These other small labels, uh, generally on the top of the bottle or on the sides, are very important to make note of. It's, it's important that you read a label at least three times. Really read the label. Don't just scan it, read it. When you first take it off the shelf and you're planning on giving it to a student, before you actually administer the medication and before you return it to the shelf, that will provide the safest identity of the medication possible. Documentation is a very important part of medication administration. Remember, if it wasn't documented, it wasn't done. Documentation forms should be individual for each student. The medication should be documented immediately after the medication is administered, and it should be documented by the person who actually administered the medication to the student. It is fine for the person who administered the medication to use their initials when documenting medications, but on the form there should be a place for their name to also be spelled out in signature form. Each documentation form should include the child's name and hopefully a picture of the child, uh, the medication to be administered, the dose of the medication, the time the medication is to be administered, the route, and a place for the documentation to be signed. It is important to designate one person to give medications consistently day after day to students in schools or childcare settings. It is also important, but rather difficult, 
to try to maintain an area of minimal distractions during the medication administration. The area should have adequate lighting, reasonable privacy, and you should have a clean working space. In addition, you should make sure that you wash your hands with soap and water before and after each individual medication administration. The gold standard for safe administration of medications is to observe the five rights. These include the right student, the right medication, the right dosage, the right time, and the right route. We'll take each one of these in turn and discuss it. When preparing a medication for administration, it is important to know what form the medication takes. A medication may be a liquid, it may be a tablet, it may be in the form of sprinkles, it, it may be in the form that is to be crushed and mixed with something, it may be a chewable, it may be a nebulized medication, it may be inhaled, or it may be applied to the skin. It is important with any medication that you never touch the medication itself. When you are preparing medications and pouring them into measurement devices, make sure that you do not ever touch the medication. If the medication has been touched, it should be discarded and poured again. It is also important to follow pharmacy directions. If a medication is, not, is to be crushed, it will say that in the pharmacy direction. You should not crush a medication if you are not instructed to do so. If you are instructed by a parent to do that, but it is not part of the pharmacy direction, you need to call your school nurse for clarification. Only prepare the medication as is written in the pharmacy direction. It is very important to observe medication effects and to listen to students. If something seems wrong or odd as you prepare or administer a medication, it probably is. You need to stop and recheck. Don't keep going if you think something seems off, either the identification of the student, the form of the medication, uh, or the medication itself. If, if something feels wrong to you, stop and talk to your school nurse. There are several effects that a medication may have on a student. One is what we call the desired effect. Um, for example, if a student has an ear infection and the student is taking a medication in school and the ear infection goes away, that is the desired effect. There are also undesired effects, often called side effects, that go along with medications and should be observed and reported to the school nurse and or the parent. These might include uh, a, a bout of diarrhea that a child might have, a minor skin rash, or any uh, unusual observation that you might make of a student as they take a medication. Make sure that that is reported to the school nurse. There are several types of allergic reactions. The one that you need to be most careful about is a serious allergic reaction. And that would include a rash all over the body, a feeling of uh, tightness in the throat, not being able to breathe, uh, prolonged vomiting. If you suspect a serious allergic reaction, emergency medical services should be called immediately. Some students have emergency medications on hand because they are known to be allergic to certain substances, such as peanuts or, or maybe a food allergy. These medications uh, are called uh, epinephrine medications. Most commonly, it, it would be an EpiPen. These medications are simple to use, but any student who has an EpiPen in school ought to have a health plan, and you need specific training in how to administer that EpiPen and when. EpiPen should be stored in a place that it would be immediately accessible in case the medication is needed. Glucagon is another emergency medication that we'll talk about a little later in the video. There are particular guidelines for field trips from the Department of Education. There, the medication must be transferred from the medication bottle to an envelope by the school nurse, and the envelope must be labeled with a pre-approved label. Anyone who gives a medication on a field trip must be trained as well. It is important to observe the five rights of medication before any medication is administered to any child. It is also important to document the medication that is administered immediately after administration. The next part of the video will include guidelines for administering medications by several routes. The routes will include the oral route, 
medication to the eye, medication to the ear, medication to the nose, medication applied topically or to the skin, medication that is inhaled, and the use of an EpiPen. These guidelines are also written in your guidelines that were provided with the video, and you can follow along as we review the steps. Make sure that you read the label directions before pouring the medication. If the medication is a tablet or a capsule, hold the lid or medication cup in your hand, putting the correct dose in the lid or the cup. Remember, do not pour the tablets or the capsules into your hand. Provide a glass of water, unless there are specific directions not to do so. For liquid medication, be sure to pour into a medicine cup from the side of the bottle opposite the label so that the medication doesn't spill onto the label and obscure it. Wipe the bottle with a clean wipe when you're finished. Give the medication to the student and observe them taking the medication. And as always, observe the student for any unusual signs. For this medication, you would put on gloves. You would gently wash exudates from the eyelid and again, follow the directions on the label. Loosen the lid and squeeze to fill the dropper if these are eye drops. Position the student lying down or sitting with the head tilted back. Gently pull down the lower eyelid to form a pocket or a sack. You apply the medication into the pocket or the sack, holding the dropper about a half an inch above the sack. Do not touch the eye with the dropper. You may brace your hand on the student's nose or cheek. If using ointment, you would place the ointment into the pocket from the inner to the outer part of the eye. If you're using a dropper, Wipe the eye with a cotton ball from the inner eye to the outer eye. For ointments, press the tear duct gently with a cotton ball for half a minute to decrease tearing and increase absorption of the medication. Have the student keep the eye closed for approximately two minutes and make sure to tell the student that their vision may be a bit cloudy for a short period of time. Warm the medication in your hands for a few minutes. Follow the directions on the label. If the label instructs you to shake the medication gently, then do that. Ask the student to tip his or her head sideways or to lie down with the affected ear facing up. Pull the earlobe up and out for an older child and down and back for a young child. Hold the dropper a half an inch from the ear being careful not to touch the ear with the dropper. Squeeze in the prescribed dose, usually measured in drops. Ask the student to stay in the reclined position for a minute or two to assure that the medication is dispersed throughout the ear canal. Administer a thin coat of medication with a gloved hand or with a tongue depressor to the area of the skin that is specified in the, instru in the instruction. For drops, have the student tip their head back or have the student lie down with a pillow under the shoulders with the head back. Place the dropper slightly in the nostril and administer the correct number of drops. Do not touch the dropper to the nostril. For a nasal spray, Insert the nozzle a half an inch into the nose and spray as directed. Have the student remain in this position for a few minutes to assure that the medication reaches the upper nasal passages. Inhalant medication varies with the type of inhaler. The specific instructions must be read carefully. Be sure that the canister is firmly inserted into the container. Have the student standing up. Shake the inhaler well and remove the cap. The use of a spacer or a holding chamber is preferable, especially for young students. Have the student exhale completely. With a spacer, the student should close the lips around the mouthpiece. Without a spacer, the student should open the mouth wide and hold the inhaler three fingers away from the open mouth. 
do not put the inhaler into the mouth. With mouth open, have the student take a slow, deep breath through the mouth, and at the same time, firmly press down on the canister to administer the dose. Have the student hold the breath for a count of five to 10 as able. Using the bronchodilator inhaler before using other inhalers containing intel or steroids is an appropriate guideline. Have the student rinse his or her mouth after use of a steroid inhaler. If a second dose is to be given, wait five minutes. Clean the space or mouthpiece with warm water. Shake off excess moisture. Allow to air dry completely before storing in a sealed plastic bag. Monitor the student for changes in respiration. Several emergency medications may be available at school, and if allowed by school policy, unlicensed school personnel may administer them under specific instructions contained in a health care plan and by a physician's order. You would uh, follow the school policy for emergencies when em administering epinephrine for a severe allergic reaction when breathing is impaired. Before administering the EpiPen, make sure that another staff member is simultaneously calling the emergency medical services. Assure that the EpiPen is the correct dose for the student. Double check the label. Take the EpiPen out of the yellow box, pull off the gray safety cap, place the tip of the EpiPen at a right angle to the outer thigh. This may be given through the child's clothes. The clothes do not need to be removed. Press the EpiPen hard into the thigh until the auto-injector functions and hold in place for 10 seconds. Remove and make sure that you discard the EpiPen in a biohazard container. This is an injectable medication, so when you remove it, there will be a needle and it needs to be disposed of appropriately. Monitor the child's breathing. Medication for the control of asthma may be administered in nebulized form. When you're administering medication in this form, make sure that you observe the five rights of medication administration. First, locate the nebulizer machine and appropriate tubing for the child. Attach the tubing to the machine. Remove the top of the nebulizer cup and place the medication into the nebulizer cup. Screw the top on tightly. Attach the tubing to the underside of the nebulizer cup. Turn on the machine and watch as a fine mist comes out of the tubing. Attach the mouthpiece or the mask, whichever one is appropriate for the child. Place it over the child's face or in the child's mouth and continue the treatment until there is no more mist coming out of the tubing. Turn the machine off, unscrew the nebulizer cup and detach the tubing. Rinse off the nebulizer cup and the mask or the mouthpiece and let it air dry overnight. We all live in the real world, and in the world of childcare settings and schools, it is a busy world indeed. Even with the most careful attention to the process of medication administration, problems will and do occur. One of the most common issues you may encounter in medication administration is a parent who does not understand or is not following the policy. Uh, some examples may be that a parent calls you and asks you to change the dosage, even though you don't have a written order from a physician. They may send the medication to school in an improperly labeled container, in a baggie, in a piece of tin foil. Uh, they may send in someone else's medication. A parent may send in their inhaler that's labeled with their name for a student to use. If any of these things happen, it is important for you in your conversation with a parent to refer to your school's medication policy. You need to depersonalize the situation by saying, I am very sorry, but our medication policy does not allow exceptions, and this is, goes against our medication policy, and I may not administer this medication to your child. If the parent persists, 
then you need to refer that parent to the school nurse. Following this segment, you'll have a chance to uh, do some role plays that will uh, help you with your skills in telephone conversations with issues of this sort. Another problem that may occur in medication administration is a medication error. Medi a medication error happens whenever one of the five rights of medication administration is not followed. For example, if, the medication, if a medication is given to the wrong student, or the wrong medication is given to the student, the medication is given at the wrong time, or the wrong dosage is given, or by the wrong route. If there is a violation in any of these rights, a medication error has occurred. It is very important, if that happens, that the person administering the medication does not panic, but instead does the following. Keep the student with you and observe any student reaction. Immediately notify the school nurse and fill out any appropriate form that your school district requires for a medication error. The school nurse will then notify poison control, the student's health care provider, and the parent. Remember, do not panic. Do not try to cover a medication error up. Notify the school nurse immediately and keep the child with you for observation. Administration of medications to children in busy schools and child care settings is a challenge. It is our responsibility to make sure that these medications are administered safely. With our help, students and children in child care settings will be healthier and better able to learn.